The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Mr. Munchen, I... No, please. Please, Mr. Munchen. Please, you can't be dead. No, please, Mr. Munchen, don't be dead. Don't you understand what they'll say? They'll say I did it. They'll say I murdered you. Please, Mr. Munchen. Don't be dead. Don't be dead, please. I don't see barley, Paul. Should I put the barley seed in the barn? Yeah, go ahead. Right over there. I'll tell Mr. Munchen it's here. Who killed him? Did you do it? No, I, I didn't do it. What difference does it make? Think anybody's going to believe me? Oh. oh. What happened? Mr. Munchen's been shot, son. Well, who did it? Barney. I don't know. Well, let's not jump to any conclusions. All these records not going to help him anyway. Look, Mark, you go on to school, but don't say a word about this till we find out what really happened, you hear? Yes, Paul. You hear? Yeah. What happened to your fingers, Barney? I don't know. I must have... must have torn the nails. If I didn't do it... I... All right, all right, take it easy. Now, start from the beginning. I must have torn them when I... Tried to stop the man who killed Mr. Munchen. You see, I was out in the barn. I heard a shot. No, I was, well, there were a lot of shots. I came running in here and 
And there was Mr. Munching on the floor. Who's next? Who's next to sample the elixir of life? That life-giving goodness in every bottle. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here not to sell this to you. No, indeed, I give it to you for only 25 cents. Now, don't crowd, don't push, don't push. Who's next? Young lady, may I? Nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me pass among you. Please note on the bottle the contents. Each bottle is guaranteed to contain two ounces of East India juniper juice. Ladies and gentlemen, this will do worlds for your ales. This will help you no matter what your it's problem is. nice day, Lucas. Now, I can't ever hardly remember it being such a nice day. Barney! Barney, what are you doing in town today? No matter what they say, Ellie, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Do what? Barney, what are you saying? Mr. Munchen was killed, Ellie. Barney and I go in it to see the marshal. Mr. Munchen? You're not saying Barney did it, Lucas? Nobody's saying Barney had anything to do with it. He's just going to tell Mike his story the way he told it to me. Come on, Barney. But what happened? Barney, you got to tell me what happened. Ellie, you know what they'll do to me with my record? Nothing's going to happen to you, Barney. The longer you put it off, the tougher it's going to be. You just tell Mikey a story like you told me. Come on. Munchen was dead when they got there, Micah. I found this next to his body. What happened to the money? I don't know. What's that? Old man Munchen murdered? Is money gone? Joe Hanna. He'll spread everything he heard over the whole territory in five minutes. Now, Valley, what else can you tell me to support your story? Just what I told Lucas. But look, look at my nails. I tell you, I, I tore them and I grabbed the killer's arm. I've seen your nails. It doesn't prove anything. I'm afraid I'm going to have to hold you, Valley, till the circuit judge arrives. Meantime, I'll ride out to the ranch, check your story. I tell you, I saw it with my own eyes. Lucas McCain brought him in. Balney killed old man Munchen. He shot him for the money he got from the sale of his cattle last week. Why, they even had the empty strong box with them. Balney Adams, a murderer? I can't believe it. That's true, I tell you. Now, that's just what happens when you trust a man who spent time in a penitentiary. Well, what if he did? He paid for it. Balney wouldn't hurt a fly. It's them quiet ones like Balney you gotta be careful of, I tell you. Just a moment, Mr. Hanna. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a case in point. Mr. Hanna here is shortening his life due to the excitement. Now, all you need is one swallow of this. Take it, friend. You'll bless the day you found it. Feel better? It does taste good. Yeah. It's got quite a zing. Go ahead, Hangman. Try it. I feel better already. I don't want any. My name's Harold Tenner, not Hangman. Sorry, Tenner. You've heard about the killing. Valney Adams killed old man Munchen. Looks like you're gonna have a hanging. All right, folks. Now, let's have your attention right up here. We'll get on to the entertainment. Now, you've seen what happened to Mr. Hanna. The same thing can happen to you. This here, live longer with Elixir of Life is our motto. Ellie, Ellie, nobody's saying for sure that Bonnie killed Evan. Well, then why is Michael holding him, Lucas? Why doesn't he let him go? Well, hang him, Lucas. His reputation's against him. He's already been in jail. Oh, his reputation's got nothing to do with it, Ellie. Micah went out to the Munchen Ranch and checked on Volney's story. And the facts will be presented and he'll have a trial. He'll be treated just as fairly as anybody else would. Maybe they won't wait for trial, Lucas. I heard him down by the medicine man's wagon. They're saying Volney's guilty. And what they're saying doesn't make any difference, Ellie. I'm scared, Lucas. Guess if anything happened to him, there wouldn't be anyone ever for me again. Nothing's gonna happen to him, Ellie. I promise you that, as long as he's innocent. Now, why don't you come inside and let me make you a cup of real good coffee? <laughs> Thank you, Lucas, but I gotta get home and fix Volney's supper. 
I don't want him eating that jail food. All right. Well, why don't you put some soap on your face first? No, all right. You kids just don't like soap, do you? Uh, I don't want to. Come on, more. Oh, son, the pump is gone again. I'm sorry. Here, uh, I just fixed it last week. Are we going into town tomorrow to visit Bolney in jail? Maybe. Nobody thinks he did it. I mean that he killed Mr. Munchen and stole his money. What do you think? I don't know. Mr. Munchen was awfully mean to him. Well, and that couple with the gossip in town makes him guilty, huh? Well, I didn't say that. I was just telling you what I heard the folks saying in town. It doesn't mean that I believe it myself. Well, I know that, son. But gossiping about something as important as a man's life can be a very dangerous thing. It can become prejudiced without even realizing it. Hand me that screwdriver, will you, Mark? Thank you. You know, we've got laws that were meant to protect us. And one of those laws says that a man is innocent until he's proven guilty. You better get to bed now, huh? All right. Well, Paul? Hmm? Well, aren't you gonna tell me what you said? About Volney? Well, son, I don't think anyone gentle enough to see the real beauty in Ellie Akins could ever raise his hand against another human being. That's what I think. Well, if that's your opinion, you stick to it, huh? Yes, Paul. You better get to bed now. Night. Night. for Brownlee this morning. Bacon and eggs. Thought maybe he'd eat breakfast. Didn't touch a bit of his supper last night. I know. He was mighty depressed. Maybe you can cheer him up a bit while I go out on an errand. Brownlee! Ellie's here with the best food in town. Good morning, Ellie. Brownlee. There you are. Thanks. See you later, Ellie. Bought your bacon and eggs for me. It's all like hammering going on outside. They're repairing the roof to the hotel. Now, Brownie, you've got to eat. You've got to keep up your strength. Roof to the hotel? What's the sense of my keeping up my strength? Don't keep me from stretching a rope. Please don't talk like that, Brownie. You didn't do it. You, you couldn't do it. I know, Ellie, but the evidence is, is too strong against me. The jury isn't going to believe me. Only. All my life, I've been a lonely woman. I've had few friends and no one to love. Since I met you, I've... I've had something to be proud of. A man who loved me and was kind to me. It's given me a strength I never knew. You've got to have that strength for me. Please. for you. I wouldn't care if I lived or died. Now you eat, Bonnie. Those are nice, fresh eggs. I do appreciate you giving me a few minutes alone with him, though. Thank you.
Morning, Marshal. I, uh, I see the condemned man ate a hearty meal. He's not condemned yet. Oh, no offense, Marshal, but uh, the way folks is talking, it's just a matter of time, him being a jailbird and all. That'll do, Sims. Uh, just, just a minute. Whose side are you on, Marshal? The killers or the dead man's? You know, it's been my experience that uh, when a culprit has friends in high places, justice is tempered not with mercy, but with that most dangerous of all elements, misguided loyalty. Good day, sir. <laughs> I don't want to hear you call him that again. His name is Mr. Tenor. You remember that? Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Tenor. Oh, howdy, Lucas. Mark. Eh, sure is a hot one, ain't it? Just ain't gonna let up. Well, it's too hot for heavy building, I'll say that. Why are you working on that old gallows scaffold? Oh, I'm getting it ready for Balmy Adams. He's been tried already? Oh, oh, oh no, not yet, Mark, but he's gonna be. From the looks of things, there ain't much doubt about the outcome, so I just thought I'd get the old scout ready. I'll meet you at Hattie's after school, son. Balmy Adams don't deserve the consideration to give a bank robber. He took no risks. He crept in and sneaked up in back of that poor old soul who befriended him and killed him. Cold-bloodedly, ruthlessly. I, I say he should be destroyed. Mr. Munch, I... wasn't doing Balmy no favor. Baldy worked hard for what he got. The old man still took him in fresh from prison. So what? Now, what are y'all blaming Balmy for? It could have been a stranger that killed Munchen. A stranger wouldn't have known about that cattle money, Myrtle. That's right. I say it's a shame and a crime to return evil for good. And when Balney struck down that old man, that's exactly what he done. Morning, Myrtle. Hello, Lucas. It's been going on like that ever since yesterday. Between that and the hammering and the heat, I've a good notion to close up till after the hanging. Hanging, Myrtle? Here's a list of the things I need. I'll pick them up in a few days, all right? Thanks, Lucas. And look at the way the marshal's been catering to him, even letting his woman friend visit him in jail. And him a murderer. Mark my word, we'll have that killer in our midst again. It was Balney took the old man's cattle money. That's right. And have you noticed the hangman working in the heat? Well, he ain't building that gallows for nothing. He's building it for Balney Adams and the taxpayers is gonna pay for it. Now, nobody goes to all that trouble and expense unless they're pretty sure it's gonna be used. The Colonel's right. The gallows are too good for him. Sims, for a man who lives in Norfolk only six months of the year, it seems to me you're taking an awful lot of interest in the affairs of this town. Evil is evil, McCain. I fight for justice wherever I go. That was a lesson brought home to me with considerable force this morning. There's an element in this town that believes in coddling prisoners. And I say it's up to every man jack of us to... to abide by the law. Now, look, we've got a marshal here. He's holding a man because a murder's been committed. But it hasn't been decided either way about that man. And until it is, nobody around here is going to start destroying anyone. He'll say Balmy Adams is guilty, and you all know it as well as I do. And justice has got to be done. Well, there's one thing I don't understand. Why haven't you stopped Tenor from starting repair work on those gallows so soon? Lucas, I've been arguing all morning. If I should go out there and stop Tenor from doing a job he's been making a living at for years. Well, don't you know he's adding fuel to the flames that loudmouth medicine man is fanning up out there? There's more of that kind of talk, and Balmy won't have a chance. Innocent or guilty. I agree with you, Lucas. You're right. But if Tenor wants to advance his time and material just on the chance that we'll be needing his gallows, there's not much I can do about it. It's on his own property, always has been. Mike, there's a dangerous feeling out there. It's the kind of a thing that can result in a lynching. There'll be no lynching in Norfolk, Lucas. That much I'll guarantee. All right. Look, Mike, do you mind if I go over and talk to Tenor? Sort of unofficially? No, I don't mind. Go ahead. Oh, 
you're going at that like there's no tomorrow, Harold. Well, it's a job of work, that's for sure, but it's one that's got to be done. Well, I wanted a word with you. It seems like a mistake getting this started so early. It's having a bad effect on the folks in town, and it's, well, it's kind of shortcutting the verdict on Valney. You mean my working here? <laughs> I think you're exaggerating things, Lucas. Just give me a hand. I don't think I'm exaggerating anything, Harold. Between you and the, the gallows and this heat and that medicine man, things are kind of getting out of hand. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Lucas. I heard that Colonel and Hannah talking this morning. They're just blowing off steam. That's all, just blowing off steam. Well, if you'd help me get this upright in the position, I'd be through here in a little while. I think it's the noise and the heat that's got people all riled up now. Just if we get to. <coughs> Harold, is that making it tough on yourself wearing that heavy shirt and all this heat? Oh, no, no. The wool kind of soaks up the sweat. Actually, it's cooler this way. Now, just give me a hand on that end down there. All right. When I say heave, we'll both go together, all right? Ready? Heave. Oh, oh, fire. There's blood all over your sleeve, Harold. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard it on this poor thing. You better take a look at it. You might need some doctoring. No, no, it, it's all right, Lucas. I'll take care of it as soon as I get finished here. Harold. Everybody knows that Balney claimed he scratched the killer on the arm before he got away. Are you wearing that shirt because you have to? No. Now, let's... You've lived in this community for years, Tenor. Why'd you do it? Why? I'll tell you why. I've been a hangman all my life. Every time they wanted to hang somebody, they'd come and get me, pay the fee, and I'd spring the trap. Then nobody talked to me for weeks. Wouldn't even look at me. But if they did talk to me, it was to call me hangman. Do you have any idea what it's like to be an outcast in your own hometown? It's no cause for killing, Tanner. Maybe it ain't. Maybe it ain't, but I've killed so many men on this platform that one more didn't make any difference. Not if it'd get me away from here. Well, I think we better go see the marshal. <laughs> Lucas, just let me take one more look at freedom. What men call freedom. Why did he become one? Well, son, sometimes in life we're trapped into doing things we regret later on. It's too bad, but hangmen are necessary. Somebody's got to be the hangman and be willing to accept payment for it. But also, he's got to know what he's letting himself in for when he takes the job. Harold Tenner just wasn't meant to be a hangman. It was only a question of time before he cracked up. Before I decide what I'm going to be, I'm going to give it lots of thought. Now, wait a minute. I thought you decided definitely to be a writer a couple of weeks ago. Well, I still might be one. I'm going to think it over a lot first, though. You do that, Mark. Dishes done? Well, not yet. Well, they're not going to wash and dry themselves, you know. <laughs> All right. Tonight you can wash, I'll dry. Oh, no, no. Tonight you wash and you dry. Oh, Pa! <laughs> oh, but, Pa, that's not... Thank you. 